Oh. Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to Anno 2205. So when we last left off, we were just about to do this uh, conflict mission in the Kenatak Conflict Zone, which is this one up here. It's the Arctic Conflict Zone. It'll pop up from time to time, and doing it will uh, will give you the... I could really use your help, but I gotta warn you. People are going to be shooting at you. We'll, do, we'll give you the petrochemicals resource, which is the special resource that's needed in order to add production modules to your uh, Arctic buildings, which is really important, actually, because you need to increase heat, and the best way to do that is to add additional production modules to your factories. However, you don't actually have to do this if you don't want to. If you, uh, I think one of the good things that, that Ubisoft did for this game was allow you to skip the the combat so if you really don't like the combat system you can just like it says here reach the next corporation level and you won't have to do it funnily enough we are so close to reaching the next corporation level that if i didn't want to do this mission i could avoid it now you do get fewer rewards you can only get 10 petrochemicals whereas we'll get way more than 15 for doing it um so anyway we don't have any ship upgrades available because we've already upgraded this so let's go ahead and accept the mission. Now, it's actually kind of funny, because that dude that you saw on the screen there, um, there's a running, sort of a running in-joke in, in uh, the Anno series, that there's always a character with the last name of Jorgensen. There. See the mess? Transmitters generating interference all over the place, plus battleships to guard them. I'd like to hear Dr. Maverick explain just how we're supposed to cope with such a force exactly. Glad you're not letting us down here. Indeed. Long ago, people believed that the moon controlled the weather. We will prove them right. Gives into delusions of grandeur, it says. Yeah, these guys are like, uh... Those guys are interesting. They're, 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 they basically worship the moon. They're upsetting the balance of the whole region. Do something. So, as you noticed, that dude's name was Villa Jorgensen. And uh, there's been a, Jorg a, per a character named Jorgensen in, like, e every Anno game. <coughs> Green to go. I don't know when exactly the Jorgensen showed up. Because I only... Um, I only started playing the Anno series at Anno 2070. But there was a Tilda Jorgensen in 2070. And then people were saying that, oh hey, her last name is Jorgensen, there was a Jorgensen in the older, other Anno game. Full speed ahead. So it's like uh, sort of a running thing. All hands engaged. Where there's always a Jorgensen. So I think it's kind of funny. I like that. Target acquired. Oh, I think it's not dead yet. There we go. Now there's an interesting thing about the combat system in this game. You you could use this kinetic shields, which only cost four Full fuel, to try and reduce the damage that your ships are taking. But so far, I honestly haven't found a situation where doing that is better. Than using the repair drones. Coordinates confirmed. Like I'll only use the shield if I don't have enough fuel for the repair drone. But I very rarely don't have enough for the repair drone because you get quite a bit of fuel. Affirmative. Then we'll grab some iridium. We are on our way to uh, Villa Jorgensen's uh, depot Battle to stations. complete this little side mission. Which will get us 13 petrochemicals. So yeah, if you opt to skip these missions and don't do them, you will miss out on a lot of these special resources. Now, on certain maps, certain sectors that you can control, there are um, side missions that involve acquiring, building things that will generate you special resources. But the fact still remains that if you don't do these missions, you're going to have a lot less of those resources. But 
You can still skip them if you want. Affirmative. Okay, so. Um, look, I'd go myself, but all the noise and shooting and. Enemy detected. All hands. Come on, how do we detach this thing? Come on, we've taken it to Villa's place. Under there we kill this thing. Killing these structures gets a heck of a lot easier once you get the uh, artillery ship. We're just gonna summon some dudes here. Now the cool thing about summoning these dudes is that they stick around forever. Weapon systems online. So these guys are gonna sit in this cho in this uh, intersection for the rest of the mission. There we go. Turning in the assignment. You sure poured some cold water on those firebrands. Cold water on those firebrands. What is she talking? About? On our way. Okay, we're gonna deliver three missile barrage to Vil Jorgensen. Okay, so basically Vil Jorgensen just wants us to find three of these Full red missile ahead. barrages and then give it to him. That's not a problem. Battle stations. One thing I will say about these combat sections, it'd be nice if your ships were faster. Coordinates confirmed. But they are pretty large ships, except for these guys. And Copy ships that. don't go, you know too fast, I guess. Combat vessels. Still, it'd be nice if you could get around the map a bit faster. Clearing out these minefields. Destroy chargers. Alright. We're totally going to do that. Because we only have to destroy two more. And that's these tiny guys. And they're super easy to kill. So. Especially since we have splash damage. A splendid victim. My superior sends her compliments. Yes, thank you, Aiden Bargava. We are very quite good around here. Clear for action. We know exactly what we do. Later on, these missions actually get difficult. Care of the damages. Um, because you can do them on higher difficulties. Okay, so right now we can only do these missions on the on the, the easy difficulty, where these the enemies take lots of damage, you Underway. take less damage. There's really no way to fail the mission unless you're just trying to. But in future. We will uh, on our way. do these missions at higher difficulty levels, that, which unlock as you gain more naval experience, engage. naval combat level. And what happens then is that they actually get difficult. You actually have to be a little tactical about it. And uh, you can actually die. You know, but by completing those missions, you get uh, much greater rewards. Never guessed you'd be so conservative. Come on, make your voice count. Oh yeah, she wants me to vote in the council elections. So we'll talk about that in a bit when I'm done with this mission. I'll go do that. Let's go grab this graphene. Got to make sure that there we go, petrochem storage. Got to make sure that we uh, explore the map and grab all this stuff. I hope I'm not getting sick again, but at least my voice is terrible today. But I don't think I'm getting sick again, because it's just my voice, so hopefully it stays that way. Back up, we don't need to fight that thing and a bunch of ships. Hands in 
See that submarine popped out of the ground. I mean the water, what am I saying? Battle stations, they're attacking. Of course they're attacking. Clear for so these dudes. The um You have entered a restricted area. What, what, what are they called again? The over to watch? They're they're Open they fire. sound like moon worshippers. Really what the Orbital Watch is, is the moon was colonized in several waves. Um, we're wave three. That wave two had just com uh, completed a while back. I think the Orbital Watch, they're either, they were either part of wave two or the original wave one. And they have come to believe that they alone, the original colonizing, the original, um, you know, moon colonists, Underway. are the only ones that should be allowed Copy on that. the moon. And uh, they're prepared to disrupt the global climate in order to uh, Copy that. get their way. So they're not, you know, they're not good people. Alright, it looks like we got all of the uh, side objectives, which is good. We just have to go and turn this one in. This one. Now technically we don't have to take the entire fleet over there. I usually do. But since we've uh, cleaned out the area between us and Jorgensen's place. Sure, take your time. Well, we can just send that fast little ship over there. All hands engage. And we'll destroy this destructible storage in the meantime. Yeah, see, there's a bit of a of a warm up period between before those turrets actually shoot you. I, it just it just had to be that that ship took the one path Underway. that took it just past a, a, a thing. I'm gonna deliver these missile barrages. Talk about dropping the hammer. Copy that. I mean, sure, it would be fun to uh, use those, but we'll find some more. Copy that. And, you know, the whole point of doing this mission is to get petrochems. Full speed ahead. Like right over there. There's a thing right over there. Target acquired. I love the the EMP. It really chews through them. On higher difficulties, it doesn't do as much damage. Full speed ahead. As you can see, there one EMP basically took down like everybody. Roger. That doesn't happen on the higher difficulties. But it does do decent damage over time. Roger. So it's pretty good. Uh, these towers are annoying because they shoot um, three missiles at a time and they do splash damage. It's very nice once they um, once I get the artillery and can just take them and, and can just outrange them. Because that's what the artillery does; it outranges the structures, so you can just uh, open fire. Oh, the artillery doesn't fire very quickly. Well, after this mission, we'll probably unlock it. It doesn't fire very quickly, but it does a lot of damage to structures. It's your structure buster. Weapon systems online. I mean, it does decent damage to you know ships as well, but not not nearly as many as, as much as it does to structures. Okay, so we're fighting our way yeah, through here. It's not going to be easy because this shipyard down here is producing ships. And we have to get down there and take it out. We're going to call in reinforcements just to help deal with ships that come out. 
we need to focus on destroying the actual shipyard. Because it will just keep producing ships until we destroy it. There we go. And we get a little bit of iridium for our troubles. Now we have to destroy these interference devices. And the Orbital Watch built these things really quickly. It's just stupid. Our morale is impossible to destroy. I like how those little dialogue boxes gives you some like insight into their state of mind. Virtual Drake masks his anger. Well, I guess it's a good thing we have more than one go. I guess it's a good thing we have more than one. Yeah, well, it's going to be destroyed pretty soon, too, dude. Underway. Now, the thing about these missions is I can complete the main objective, and then I can st and still, um, Green to go. you know, I can choose to stick around in the mission. If I want to explore the rest of the map and collect Open more uh, strategic resources, or special resources, I don't know what you should call them. Like, I haven't even gone to this upper area of the map, you know? But we've got um, plenty of petrochems, and in the interest of showing you guys something other than just this mission, I think we'll finish it. Well, we'll finish it, and then we'll we'll go explore this top area. Ah, the climate here has stabilized again. I really owe you. One. Even though it's still Thanks smoking. Thanks for the climate stabilizers for us. Really okay, so we'll see how much we got. And if I want more, we'll, we'll go exploring a bit more. Okay, we ended up with 49 petrochemicals. You know, that's good for now. Yeah, we're going to get the flare pretty soon. This is the flare right here. It upgrades with my next corporate level. So, at least now we know you can hit things that don't move. You're back? Now how's the status? Status is good. I must admit, I underestimated you. My apologies. Be assured we will support you in your endeavors. Yep, he's happy that we got and it I'm back sure online. I'm sure we haven't seen the last of them. But the Global Union will not give in to Drake's demands. The Lunar Licensing Program must continue. Yep. Alright, Petrochem's combat. Petro now we have 59 Petrochem's, which is very nice. Yeah, unique sector projects. Okay, so... Um, this is a space station. Now that we've connected to it, we have a couple of, um, of options here. Uh, there's the world market, which basically allows you to set up trade routes between, you know, a, 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 a sector and the station and sell it. Now, here's the problem. For example, if I wanted to sell constructor bots. Right now, this trade route would actually lose me money. It's not, it won't actually produce anything. What you have to do is you have to scroll up and send more and more stuff until eventually this becomes positive. Now, once you get, I can't do it right now because my transfer capacity is 20, but later this upgrades. However, once I have access to the larger elevator cars, it costs more money. So you just won't be able to sell certain things at a profit in the world market. It's just not going to happen. But you know, if you can sell the proper amount of something, you can make uh, an actual profit. But sometimes it has to be, like, really high. Okay, so let's click on the council. This is where the course of the world economy is decided. You can influence those decisions. It all depends on who you support. I'll make some recommendations here and there. Yeah, the mysterious woman. Now, this is kind of like the, um, you know, the council thing from, uh, 2070. Um... Where if these guys win this election, they have various people communicate. Distance makes it harder. If bar of Foxcom makes it easier. Um, benefits, various benefits, like this storage depot that is uh, slightly better than the default one. Um, At a bar of Foxcom, <laughs> communications is taking on an entirely new. Dimension. She's gonna keep talking every time I highlight something. Uh, like this, like usually the accumulators are, are minus 10, this one's minus 15. Um, 
and then usually workforce maintenance is minus 20, this is minus 25. Oh, shut up. However, there's always one of these guys that bribes you. And I see absolutely no reason. If you'd vote for Barra Foxcom, that would help fund my studies. Screw you, you're not offering me anything. I see no reason not to vote and not for the person that is going to actually give you this. Look at that. 100,000 credits, 400 iridium. Cool. Steve. And here's your loot. And she, you get it immediately. Yeah, so I have no reason not to uh, go for that. Yeah, and it shows you who got the most. Um, Saimon got the most in the last period, probably because he was the one bribing. Like, the person that... The, the, the company bribing you changes. But why would you not take the bribe? Like, it's so good. So that's the council. <laughs> Basically, click on it once in a while, see who's bribing you, and vote for them. Like, seriously. 400 Iridium? That's just crazy. Yeah, I do some shameless self-advertising. Got a trading post in this sector, too. Please stop by, okay? Yeah, so in Anna 2070, Tilda Jorgensen was the leader of that co-op who liked small cities and, and was, like, the friendliest character in the game. And now, a hundred and whatever, 25 years later, her descendant, Villa, is, uh, you know... Help, helping us out. The Orbital Watch presents a greater threat than we thought. Drake must have secret supporters. It's essential the Union shows a strong presence on the moon. And to Indeed. make this possible, we need you to send a fleet of colony shuttles up there. Okay. Time to conduct some space technology research. Now we need to get 250... Warning. Unfulfilled demand for specific consumer products. Scientists, yeah. How are we on the stuff we actually need to survive? Uh, not the best. We need to improve a lot of this stuff. Now, first things first, I want to improve my metal foam production because I was annoyed that it was so slow before. So we're going to make another one of these. And, you know, the benefit of this is that it increases our buildable area by a sizable amount. We can actually place two of them down. And we can actually, uh, you know, so that's pretty cool. So now we have access to that, we can start uh, uh, <coughs> for these canneries. Oh yeah, that that uh, it's especially useful for the mines. Um, so this is our ge and our geothermal turbines. So we're, we're going to add another unit onto this. Ah, uh, darn it! Workforce went down. It feels like I have a lot less workforce than I usually do. And that's probably actually true. The reason I say that is because I'm on a harder difficulty than when I was uh, testing the game out. So we're going to put it here. Well, I want to save room to put another one of these right there because we know it'll fit. Just got to build houses. Put a house here if I move that over there. Move it there. Use a road. Place a house. That is so close. That should be in the zone. Seriously, it should. Um, what we could do is put two houses here. And then we'll just pull a road. Right over there. Well, there's no point in that little bit. Now it is kind of weird to do that, but we can't do that. So. All right, time to make some improvements. Okay, Rafferty, stop talking. Um. So here's our aluminum mine. We want to upgrade our aluminum mine with another module. So now we're at an even consumption of that metal foam. Now we do need some more canned food. 
which is fine because now we can add another canning conveyor belt which fits very nicely here consume some of our petrochems and now we're good so this is basically it the uh, that's the um, now that we have petrochems uh, things are very good here once you acquire them stuff starts going better in this zone okay so yeah especially because you can just you can add more fisheries to the fishing harbor like I can add another fishery here instead of having to build another one that's the big thing once you have access to upgrades it's these coastal things makes them much better now we need to produce neuro implants and we also need to get these dudes some vitamin drinks we need to get scientists Mankind can survive anywhere. And we can't get scientists until we do that. So they need four vitamin drinks. So the solution to that is to go to Viridian Coves. But before we do that, let's just... Well, no, because going to Viridian Coves is going to help us in two ways. Once we, can once we supply them with vitamin drinks, because I did that because I don't think we have enough production here vitamin drinks. Oh yeah, we have plus seven. Okay, I can just do it. Um, I want to trade six so that we have plus two. Let's confirm that. Being exposed to those freezing temperatures all day? Your Arctic stuff will sure appreciate the extra vitamins. So, I don't actually want to load for The stage codes. is yours. But once our research is done, we'll be the ones in the spotlight. Ah, yes. Once Lei Sheng is finished restructuring, Everything will return to the natural order. Yep. So we level up to six. These guys are still at five, but they are going to come back up and shuffle around. You basically have to get to like level 13 before these guys quit. Please contact me if your time allows. I'll be waiting. Catching back up. It's connected. Like they're very good at catching back up. Please finish that assignment. The delay is jeopardizing up. Oh yeah, scientists. He wants us to get a hundred scientists. Usually those sector quests kind of line up with the actual quest for that sector. Not always though. But sometimes. Can I move this? Looks like it didn't have a negative impact. Good. It's almost like they're 3D printing these houses. Okay, so now that we have vitamin drinks, these guys are more satisfied. Oh, nice to meet you so person. more of them moved in. So that solved our workforce problem. Now we're getting lots of employees, lots of workforce. Which is excellent. So as they move in, we're probably going to need to increase the cannery again. Um, just because I can see that being a problem. Now, neuro implants. Um, we can get those by building a neuromodule factory, which means that we need a molybdenum mine. Okay, so what we need to do these things don't use logistics. Why do I have that over there? Anyway, where's a mine site? We need to find another mine site. Not a coastal site, a mine site. There's a mine site right there. So we need to drag a road over there. I'll make it straight because straight looks better. Well, nope, that's it for that. But first, we're going to actually build the molybdenum mine. So we're going to click Please, this. Feel free. We're going to build the molybdenum mine. It's going to need like 27 uh, whatevers. So we're going to move this and we're going to plock it over here because this doesn't actually use any logistics. And now we have a molybdenum mine. So we got 10 molybdenum. I just want to finish this uh, production this chain so you can see it. Neuromodule factories. We get four implants for four molybdenum. And it costs quite a bit of money to build. So we're going to build this. Um, we're going to build it right here. We're going to build it like in, on this area here so that we can start building more houses over there. All right. Time to make some improvements. And we're going to put the first bit right here. Great. 
Our control and communication systems in space will be operated with these interfaces. Okay, so now we've got that. Now I just need community. And of course, when we... Oh, I need to move that over one. So that I can fit a module in there, and then we can just fit modules in here. Okay. So, now that we have that, they need community. And that is fulfilled by building the community center. The community center has an incredibly limited range. You have to place it in an area that is, like, central to the colony. Otherwise, it's not going to cover very many people at all. Wait, how do I rotate this thing? Right. See, it doesn't even fit there. I need to move this house right here. Okay, so where can we put this house? We can put this. We're not going to put it there. It'll fit right here. So now we'll build the community center. And then I'll be it for this episode. Yeah, I mean... He doesn't need this much space. Yeah, the maintenance cost is a thousand. In times like these, it's important that people move closer together. Especially with terrorism at our very doorstep. That's why I don't, you don't, I don't like building very many of these. But we're at a deficit. See? So these three houses here are not getting enough community. And it's based on road connections. So, because this is kind of a funky road, they aren't getting any community. But you see how short range this thing is? These guys aren't either. I don't like how short range this thing is. It, it's really short, the range on it. And that's quite annoying. But anyway, we got, we got that going for us. I hope you guys have been enjoying Anno 2205. I certainly am. Um, stay tuned for future episodes. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.